Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. This is a City of Sioux Falls City Council Minnehaha County Commission joint meeting. Today is Monday, May 21st, and we're certainly pleased to have all of you here. I do have a special welcome to um, Councilor Kermit Staggers, who are, who's joining the team. Nice to have you back on the team there, Councilor Staggers. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we'll start uh, today's meeting with a roll call of your City Council and, of course, the Minnehaha County Commission. Let's start with the City Council. Councilors Aguilar? Here. Anderson? Here. Entman? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Jameson? Here. Karski? Here. Rolfing? Here. Staggers? Present. Thank you. And the Minnehaha County Commission? Uh, the Minnehaha County Commission, Peckus is absent. Otherwise, everybody's here. Well, thank you. Let's start our meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd all stand, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. We'll move on to the regular agenda. Council, would uh, anybody like to make a motion to uh, move on with tonight's agenda? Move to approve, Entman. Second, Anderson. Councilor Entman's made a motion to approve tonight's regular agenda, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. If we could have a roll call vote, please. Councilors Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erbenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 8 to 0. County? Uh, County, I need a motion. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Very good. Thank you. Well, let's move on to item one. Mr. Chair, I'll be standing down on this one. Thank you, Commissioner. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending Appendix C of the Code of Ordinances of said city by rezoning property at 9101 East 10th from the RC Recreation Conservation District to the RR Rural Residential District. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Good evening. Pat Herman with Minnehaha County Planning. And you have before you tonight a request to rezone some property. It's, you can see it's outlined in red on the screen. It's located on the end of East 10th, East 10th Street. Um, you can't go much farther than this property out there. And it lies right adjacent to the city limits, where, which are in kind of the shaded color on the screen. Uh, the petitioner is Chris Rollis, and he is requesting to rezone this property from RC Recreation to RR Rural Residential District. Right now, under its current zoning, you could build two houses on this site, and he would like to develop a third house, which would make it more economically viable to develop the site. This is in the joint zoning area, which is why we're here tonight to hear this, and it is shown on your 2035 future land use plan for residential development. Now this property, and you can see um, on the left side of the screen there, the, the lots and the roads, that's the Arbor's Edge development. So this does abut to that property. And when the city developed their east side sewer district plans, the property we're looking at tonight was included in the plan as part of the sewer basin for uh, the Arbor's Edge development as well. And you can, next slide. Um, you can see here, outlined in red is the property again that we're looking at. To the left of that or the west, that is phase four of Arbor's Edge development and that is the last phase of their development out there. So the sewer basin would not be constructed until the time that Arbor's Edge uh, was constructed in that area. However, it was planned on this property for a ratio of 1.25 units per acre. And that the request for three houses would, would certainly meet that development. Um, if you could do the next screen. So we kind of highlighted uh, the road that would be going into the Arbor's Edge development. It's right on the township line. So the left or west side is actually in the city limits. The east side would be in the county. And that's the portion that currently would be used for the three houses to be placed here. It would not be paved at this time. It would just sort of be an access easement for them to get into when the Arbor's Edge development was constructed, both sides would need to work together. They would pave it and, and construct it to the city standards at that time. And the applicant is aware that that would be required. We did have at the Planning Commission meeting one person that spoke against this item, and it was Tim Zollner, and he owns the property just to the east 
of this. He stated that he had requested to rezone his property many years ago and was turned down, uh, but we could not find any record that had, that had ever come to a public meeting, so it may have just been a discussion in the office. And if you can just start skipping these. Um, I have some pictures of the property here to show you. Um, in the top right-hand corner, you can see there's rural acreages developed to the north. The bottom two show the existing East 10th Street, which at this point has not been paved in this area. Next slide. Um, this is the access point currently. The township line is probably just a little bit over to the right of the screen, but this is how you would get into the site. Next slide. Um, and then this is the currently the existing drive, which I'm sure they would need to improve. The fence shown on the screen is the property line. Next slide. Line. And this kind of shows you the view that is out there um, from this property looking to the east. Um, yeah. On that, um, then we're right back to looking at the rezoning. Um, the petitioner is here tonight as well. Planning com commissions met on April 23rd. They recommend approval. And so your request tonight is either to uphold their decision or deny the request to rezone property. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Pat, thank you. Before we go to the council and the commission, uh, this is the second reading. Is there anyone in the audience who wanted to speak to this item before we go to the council or the commissioners? Well, very good, very good. Council or, or commissioners? Yes. Councilor Entman. Currently, the sewer does not go there. That's what you said, right? That's right. And he will, the petitioner will be required at the point in time that the city sewer is extended to that point, he will be required to hook onto it. Right, will be required to hook up. They have to do a preliminary plan for this site, so that'll be one of the requirements that we put on there, and the houses will be constructed to have the plumbing ready to hook up to the sewer system. Thank you. Yes, uh, Commissioner Heiberger. So septic tanks until that point? Septic tanks until that point, And yes. also I want to know if there's funding attached to those sewer systems or if this is just an out there, we're going to put sewers in. I'm sorry. I there's, is there funding attached to the city putting um, sewers in on that street or is this maybe okay. 10, 15 years down the road or two years down the road? I'm wondering if there's funding attached to those sewer lines. Answer that one. I'm going to have Mike Cooper answer for the city. I'm Mike Cooper with City Planning and Building Services. Are you asking what the timeline might be for yes, the please. sewer? Um, I would say right now, it's probably at least five years out before we would get to that basin. Uh, there's quite a bit of development within the Arbor's Edge that can be sewered now, and so they still have quite a bit of inventory of lots that they could develop. Thank you. Mm Well, thank you very much, uh, Pat. Appreciate that. Uh, Council, would anybody like to make a motion or a commission? Commissioners, anybody like to make a motion? Yes, Councillor Jameson. Move to approve. Second, Anderson. Councillor Jameson has made a motion to approve uh, this item, seconded by Councillor Anderson, Jr. Uh, for the City Council. Uh, if there is no further discussion on their part, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillors Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Karski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Then it's passed eight to zero. County Commission? Motion to approve, Benninga. Is there a second? That fails for a lack of a second. Uh, so we do have approval from the council, but we have got no action on that. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Commissioner Barth. I just want to say that, uh, you know, I have a concern about uh, creating a building eligibility uh, out of out of the thin air here, where uh, out in the county uh, we have rules about how many uh, homes can be built on an acreage, and uh, you know those are transferred uh, from acreage to acreage, uh, and th those are considered to be a valuable item. And so in this case, we're uh, on the edge of town here. We are uh, looking at uh, creating an eligibility, creating an item of value, uh, which we're not doing for people uh, in other areas of the rural. And that's, that's my concern, I guess. Thank you. Yes, uh, Commissioner Heiberger. Um, that's a, lo a lot of the same reasoning I have. I don't have a problem with them getting ready to put a house in here when it's been annexed into Sioux Falls and it's out of county property. We've had people come in the past and ask us to give them a building eligibility, transfer one from someone else. You can't do that unless you have adjoining property. Um, if they can buy one from someone adjoining a property, that would be fine, but we've had lots of people just since the year and a half I've been on that have come in and asked for building eligibilities. 
they're expensive, 30, 40,000, maybe 100,000, depending on the location. And so by approving it, you're basically giving this person an income, which I don't have a problem with that, but it's not very fair to the other people who would love to have a building eligibility and have no way to get one. And so for that reason, I did not second the motion. Very good. Uh, that has failed because of uh, lack of a second on the commission's point. point. Uh, we'll now move on to item number two. A resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to the Homeless Advisory <coughs> Board. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Stacy Teason. I'm the coordinator for the Homeless Advisory Board. Sorry. Yeah. And um, the thing tonight is pretty simple. I just need to approve a new member to the Homeless Advisory Board. Shirley Helene has been with the board pretty much for the last six years, and because she has a bazillion other obligations, she's asked to step down early. She would term out in August. Um, so the resolution before you is to approve Lisa Jarding to finish out the term for Shirley the last two months, and then also to to um, join for the next three years as our new member. Um, as you know, Lisa has been around for a long time. She's in the she works for Wells Fargo as a community relations. Um, she does a lot of their community relations stuff, and their financing the CRA dollars. Lisa would be a great asset. She's very familiar with some of the work that we're trying to do in this community in regards to our homeless population. And so I just ask that you take it under advisement and prove Lisa to be our new member for the board. Very good. Is Lisa here? She is not. Okay. Very good. Very good. Folks, is there anybody who wanted to speak to this item? Very good. Council or, or commission? Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve Erpenbach. Second, Anderson. Council Erpenbach's made a motion to approve this resolution, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. If there is no further discussion on the council's part, let's have a roll call vote, please. Councilors Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Intamin? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Karski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. Same motion on behalf of the county. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried unanimous. Very good, thank you. Item three. Thank you. A resolution approving the vacation of the public right of way for East 6th Street beginning at North Pine Lake Drive in line adjacent to track one Anderson's addition north half southeast quarter of section 18 township north range 48 west and lot 6A, block 10, Pine Lakes Hills, addition in section 18, Township 101, North Range 48 West, Minnehaha County, South Dakota. Pat, welcome. Thank you. Pat Herman again for Minnehaha County Planning. Uh, the petitioners are Jeremy and Jennifer Varese, and they are here tonight. Uh, they've petitioned to vacate a portion of East 6th Street. And if you see it on the map, it's the small red dot kind of in the center. Um, this is located next to or is part of the Pine Lake Hills subdivision, which is on the northern part, which has about 90 residences there. And the south is Mystic Meadows, which has about 30 uh, residents. This area was developed in the 1970s and the early 1980s. Um, you can see that the city is pretty close. You've got Menards there um, right off of Powderhouse Road. And so this is about a half mile uh, from there. This portion of East 6th Street has never been constructed. It is being maintained by the property owners that are adjacent to it, and it is a treed area. If you could do the next slide. Um, here's just a little bit of a close-up of it. You can see, if you look there on the map, that there was no right-of-way constructed to continue further to the east to allow a connection to be made clear out to East 6th Street, or I'm sorry, yeah, East Six Mile Road on that there. Um, on April 24th, we had a meeting with city planning, city engineering, and county planning uh, to discuss the vacation request. And at that time, we looked at a pre-annexation agreement, which was resolution number 105-05 between the city of Sioux Falls and the Pine Lake Hills Homeowners Association. And next slide. I put up, uh, these are two of the portions that uh, out of that resolution that deal with annexation. And you can see that number seven, the underlined portion states that these neighborhood streets would continue to be maintained as rural section streets at their current width without curb and gutter. Also, the city of Sioux Falls will not approve any subdivision plan that routes the extension of 6th Street through the Pine Lake Hills neighborhood. And number eight touches on vacations as well, saying that staff would be receptive to reviewing street vacation requests 
from 100% of the adjacent landowners, including but not limited to 6th Street. And the petition was signed by the two property owners um, on either side of the street. If it was to be vacated, just like in the city, it would be split down the middle with 33 feet going to the north property owner, 33 feet to the south. Um, <clears throat> the other problem, if you could go to the next slide, is when you enter the subdivision, if you were to come from the west on East 6th Street, you immediately have to go left or right. There's no other choice and travel through the entire neighborhoods to get access out onto North 6th Street. These are rural roads. Uh, they are 20 foot, 24 foot paved area, but they don't have curb and gutter, and there are no sidewalks in these neighborhoods either. Um, the county planning staff was out in the neighborhood on April 28th, and we did talk to the chairman of the Homeowners Association as well as the residents in the community, and they are still behind their thought that they would not like to have any connection to a further development. They want to maintain their rural character, even though they know at some point they will be annexed into the city. Um, <clears throat> there was an opposition filed with our office from Ronald and Judy Rodell, and they own the farmland that is to the west of the Pine Lake Hills area, which is not yet developed. And it was their representative, Joel Ingle, who contacted city and county staff they do have a conceptual plan for development of their property, which would be housing and commercial and um, residential development. However, that was never submitted for approval to the city. Um, and I think it's been the city's practice that when they are going out close to neighborhoods that already exist to try to have a, the least amount of impact on those, those neighborhoods with, when bringing in a new development. So, after looking at the road design that we have in the area, the future development plans, and looking at the resolution that was signed um, by the city and the neighborhood, we are coming to you, city planning, city engineering, and county planning, and we have determined that vacating that this portion of East 6th Street would not negatively impact the traffic in the area. And so tonight, you are here because the state codified law grants the power to the county commissioners to vacate a right of way, and then also, if it's in the joint area, the city commission has to take action on that. And so I do have a few pictures to show you, again, of the area. Uh, this would be looking west from Pine Lake Drive. The red line kind of represents where the right of way would be. Next slide. And then this is standing at the other end, looking back into the neighborhood. Next slide. Um, looking to the west towards the city, which is getting closer. And the next slide. Um, here's where you would come in from East 6th Street onto Pine Lake Drive. You can kind of see the condition of the roads that are there, their width, the fact that they aren't curb and guttered. And the next slide, please. And this <coughs> is going the other direction to the south down towards the Mystic Meadows area. Next slide. And we're back to where the street vacation is. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have tonight. Pat, thank you. Great job. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wanted to speak to this item before we go to the Commissioner of the Council? Very good. Uh, city Council or County Commissioners? Yes, Councilor Anderson, Jr. Uh, question for Mr. Cooper. Mike, looking in the future, as we grow as a city, talking about annexing this property and everything, I guess my, my question is going to be more public safety. Uh, at this time, how do emergency vehicles get into that addition and in the future is 6th Street going to be something that we're going to want to see for our emergency vehicles to get in and out of that area. Yeah, if we go back to the photo that shows a larger area, Six Mile Road currently has three points of access into this area and so that will continue into the future. What we'd like to see is that any subdivision should have at least two points of access. In this case, um, there's three. So that's one of the reasons why we felt as staff that there wasn't a need to have that connectivity to the west. And over the years, we've gone back and forth between Pine Dyke Hills neighborhood, other property owners on whether or not 6th Street should extend uh, across what's now called Powderhouse Road. The plan for... Um, the area to the west of this is that at the 6th Street intersection in Powderhouse Road would be a major um, signalized intersection. It would extend 
from Powderhouse Road, probably about a quarter mile to the east and then go back down to the south towards Arrowhead Parkway. That way it would keep the commercial and the residential development a little more separated. But to come back to your original question, there, there will continue to be um, three points of ingress in terms of future emergency access to this area. Is there any concern that they're all on the same road? Um, I mean, we have a number of city subdivisions that have that same situation. Okay, thank you. Did I hear correctly in the statement that it's unlikely that 6th Street would ever extend or be impractical to extend all the way over to Six Mile Road? Yes, uh, there's no right of way to do that. It was never designed for that to happen. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, counselors and uh, commissioners, thank you for those questions. Uh, would anybody be prepared to make a motion on to approve Anderson. Second intimate. Councilor Anderson Jr. has made a motion on the city's behalf to approve this item. It was seconded by Councilor Entman. If there is no further discussion, a roll call uh, of the council, please. Councilors Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erfenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Karski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Staggers? Yes. That has passed 8 to 0. On the Commission. Make a motion to approve. Second. second. Motion by Heiberger and second by Barth. Any discussion? All in favor, motion to say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried unanimous. Very good. Thank you. Council, would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yes. Open back. Hold this. Second, Rolfing. There has been a motion by Councilor Box, seconded by Councilor Rolfing to adjourn tonight's meeting. If uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion to adjourn on the county. Motion to adjourn. Second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Very good. Well, thank you so much, counselors and commissioners, for your sacrifice. Make it a great night. This meeting is adjourned.